greetings from Paul, South Africa. We're here, we made it Sid, and it's very exciting and it's also very hot. Apologies to anyone who's watching this back home in England where it wasn't very hot, at least it wasn't when we left. Anyway, we've arrived and we are staying at a beautiful property in Paul called Pearl de Cap and it's gorgeous and it has presented the most amazing view that we couldn't possibly have anticipated. And Sid, um, I believe that you can actually even see the cricket ground from here. You can, it's over the other, It's right over the other side of the valley, so obviously the viewers aren't really going to be able to make it out. But if you get the binoculars out from here, you can actually just about see the ground and you can make out the England players in the nets right now because we've just left the ground. Mm -hmm. um, we had the chance to speak to both Heather Knight and uh, West Indies captain Hayley Matthews today, didn't we, Raf? We did, absolutely we did. Um, and Heather Knight turned up um, with six stitches in her lip and it was quite noticeable. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'd seen some pictures of the warm-up game where she'd, she'd got a hit in the mouth and we, we knew that that had happened, but I don't think we knew that it was quite as bad as it was. And actually, it's six stitches, it sounds like a hell of a lot. And she was, she was like, I was lucky I didn't lose any teeth, to be honest. <laughs> and um, yeah, so, but her, her brave face on it. Um, and, you know, she's absolutely fine. There's, there's, there's no issues apart from the fact that she's, she's got a load of stitches on the, her upper lip. Yeah, she's raring to go. Um, Alice Capsey is raring to go. Um, one person who isn't raring to go, um, pertinently to the uh, England v West Indies fixture tomorrow, England's first group stage match, is um, Stephanie Taylor. Hayley Matthews was specifically asked about that and basically said she's being monitored on a day-to-day -day basis, um, so we don't know yet whether she's going to be fit. So that's a tricky one. I guess for her as captain, it's a tricky one as well. Um, obviously, Stephanie Taylor will be really missed with the bat, but it's a tricky one to actually prepare for when you don't know whether one of your best players, who will definitely be in the 11 if she is fit is actually going to be passed to play so that was a difficult one I mean Hayley Matthews as ever kind of putting a brave face on it talking up some of their new players who have come in from the under 19s team um, and saying that they're going to go out there and you know and battle yeah and they were talking about using this experience in this world cup i mean it's it was kind of almost a confession that you know we're probably not going to win this but this is an opportunity to give experience to some younger players and we're going to use this as you know a way to develop mm -hmm. that team going forward and that makes sense from Hayley matthews mm -hmm. perspective don't forget that she's i know she's been around donkey's years but that was because she was 16 when she won that t20 world mm -hmm. cup back in 2016 mm -hmm. so she's still a young captain she's probably got you know she could be west indies captain for 10 years if she can build a team uh, from from this kind of from this acorn, she could build a great oak, and then maybe she will be winning World Cups again in ten years' time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's talk about what we took from that England press conference, though. Um, I, I felt that Heather Knight seemed very relaxed. Um, she also talked about John Lewis as being very relaxed. This is obviously his big first big test in the head co coach role. Apparently, he's off playing golf like he normally does. I mean, sorry, that sounds like he just spends all his days playing golf. Obviously, he's doing very important coaching things. But she, she did specifically mention that he likes to play golf in his downtime. Um, and apparently, he seems quite relaxed about things, so that's good. Um, and um, there seems to be a nice feeling in the camp. Um, she talked about the last couple of months as um, having offered particularly the words that she used were clarity and purpose, which I thought was really interesting. Um, obviously, when a new coach comes in, people often talk, talk up those kind of things. But that was the phrase that she used. But she did actually say this is, you know, a real pressure situation. Can we carry forward that clarity and purpose when, in, you know, when it's crunch time? And really, that first match against West Indies isn't necessarily crunch time because um, England will be very much expected to sail through the group um, and make the semi-finals and that's where things could get tricky I guess. Um, what, was there anything else that you found interesting from the press conference Sid? Well I mean well, I hate to talk about the, the Women's Premier League again but she did mention that and interestingly she gave a very different answer to the one Sophie Devine gave a little yeah. bit later in her press conference. So Heather said you know oh, we, we've been explicit that the WPL is not going to be an elephant in the room we've talked about it. Uh, she said something really really great actually she said we've told the players that they're, that they're still worth to England exactly what they're worth today. Whatever they go for in the in the WPL is not their worth to England. And I thought that was a great thing to say and it's, it's a really important point to make. Interestingly though, Sophie Devine said something completely different, didn't she, Raf? She basically said, oh, we've not really talked about that, didn't she? Yeah, so she was like, well, we've just basically, you know, almost like she was, well, we're not, we're not talking about that. We've, we're, our focus is on the World Cup. We're, we're not going to be worrying about that. So I felt like Heather's answer was um, perhaps a little bit more honest, which is actually not necessarily something you associate with Heather Knight in the sense of, I feel like, 
in, in the, at the start of her captaincy, she very much felt like she had to kind of put game face on. But actually, she was really honest and she said, yeah, it is proving a bit of a distraction from our preparation. Um, and that's obviously going to be in a lot of people's um, uh, people's reports from today, I think. Uh, and if England, if something goes wrong, especially in that match against Ireland, when the, which is actually the day of the auction, then people are going to refer back to that quote. But she's being honest, ultimately. It's got to be something that people are thinking about. Yeah, absolutely. And they're going to be sitting there worrying about it during the game, no doubt. And of course, they're not allowed their mobile phones during that game mm. situation. They have to hand their mobile phones in. This is all to do with betting and things so that yeah. it's it, it's not possible for them to accidentally put themselves in a situation where they communicate with somebody that's that's betting on the matches. Um, but that does mean that when they go walk into the ground, they have to hand all their mobile phones in, they get put in a locker, um, and then they can't touch their mobile phones until the game has, has finished, until they've done their anti-doping things and things. So that's quite a long time. And everyone else in the ground is going to know. Yeah. So the word's going to be going around and it's going to be it's going to be very interesting. I think what could be really interesting is actually the media will know and so we could potentially get somebody in a post-match press conference and be like you've just sold for three hundred thousand pounds in the in the women's premier league um how are you feeling and the person the player will be like I don't know I didn't know that um so that could be kind of interesting actually how that news gets broken potentially yeah. um yeah um Heather Knight did kind of talk about the fact that it, they're leaving it up to individual players as to whether they um try and kind of follow the auction for the couple of hours before they get to the ground or not and I think it was Mel Farrell who said oh are you going to be one of the people who is following it and Heather said I don't know so that was also interesting she hasn't decided yet I would have thought that you would have decided by now it's only what three four days to go anyway uh, so that's the Women's Premier League um, it does feel like a lot of people are talking England up in this tournament, Sid. Uh, and having just said that they they might have a relatively easy ride in the group stage, they are of course having to face India um, at the, the at the um, is it their last match or is it their, th their third match in the group stage? Anyway, they are facing India in their group, so that match is not going to be a walk in the park. Do you think that people are potentially overhyping England? Because I've been interested to see lots of people really saying they think this could be England's time. Yeah, I mean that warm-up match where they did score a hat load of runs, you know, that's definitely got some of the press going and yeah. um, you know, they're, they're basically thinking that England are going to have those kinds of scores um, in, in the tournament itself. I mean, I'd be quite surprised if, it, if they make close to 250 in the tournament. Um, but you know, scores over 200 are possible, I, sub I guess. Um, but Hayley Matthews again made the point that the pitches, Hayley Matthews of course been over here for a while because she's been participating in that tri-series and she was like, the pitches are actually, you know, sp spinny kind of pitches and they're going to be terrific. Tr tricky to bat on um, and she thinks that that's what we're going to see throughout the whole tournament so actually we could see some some lower scoring games and the spinners could come into their own but of course England have got some great spinners as well um, but are England going to win this tournament well I mean let's face it Australia remain the overwhelming favourites don't they you know um, un under all circumstances boring um, boring but true so you know and yet England have got a challenging group game against India they're expected to sell through the game because sell through the group because they're going to they're going or well, that you'd think that they will win their other games does mean of course that they're banana skins you know the West Indies could be a banana skins if they tr trip up in that game mm. if they slide over the banana skin then they really are in trouble um, but yeah and England just to say England have got a little bit of a reputation for that <laughs> first group match is a banana skin for them um, we saw it in the, the World Cup last year well it was the first like three or four matches were banana skins for them but they lost that first match in 2020 they lost their first group stage match to South Africa and that was the thing that really did them then in the semi-finals that was a washout because they hadn't topped the group so first match very important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you'd expect England to qualify for the semi-finals. It's just again a question of who they're going to face in the semi-finals. You know, might they even want to, to face? Here's the thing. Um, what, what if it's actually best to face Australia in the semi-final? Um, because you know, Australia know all about finals. That's that's when they really come into their own. They know that they they've walked all over the last 500 semi fi I mean, finals that have been. They played. do also know quite a lot about semi finals because yes, you kind of have to, to get fair, through the semi final to be in the final. I wonder if it might be interesting this time for England to face Australia in a semi final mm -hmm. and you know try and get over that hurdle when there's just that little bit less pressure in that semi final, um, and then take on somebody else in the final. So there's could it even be potentially assuming Australia win all their games an advantage in losing to India and coming second in the group. Well, I think you're doing exactly what Heather Knight warned against in the press conference, which is looking beyond this group stage. Um, she was always very careful about saying, we know that even though we are massively expected to um, to either top this group or come second in this group and get to the semi-finals, we've got to just think about who's in front of us, what's the match that's in front of us. Um, so we've kind of already said it, Sid, but who's going to win this World Cup? I think Australia will. Yeah. What do you think, Raf? Yeah, I basically agree with you.
and I think um, Australia will top their group. They will beat whoever they face in the semi-final, and then they will they will in the final. I mean, it's actually getting to the point where you just go, okay, but what's going to be more interesting is who are they actually going to play in the final? And I guess that from what we've just said, you can probably deduce that what we think is it's going to be either England or India, depending on whether England can really kind of get over that semi-final hiccup. Yep, absolutely. Great. Right, let's wrap things up, Sid. I've got sweat trickling down my back. What a lovely thing for the viewers to know. <laughs> um, we will um, we will keep you updated, I suppose. Um, I'm not quite sure how often we're going to be doing videos from the World Cup, but watch out well, definitely for definitely one on Sunday. Oh, there we go. So watch out for that and see you then. Bye. Bye.